Hey guys, what's going on? I am Chef Chris with The Wild Man Chef. And with all this coronavirus stuff going on, my uncle sent me this scientific journal, uh, medical journal, that basically laid out some of the stuff the South Koreans are doing to help fight the virus. And it's really complicated, even like really hard for me to understand a lot of the, the journal itself. So he kind of distilled it for me, basically saying that one of the challenges is that zinc is unable to enter the cell wall of our, you know, just our regular cells. And so the virus is being, is able to replicate itself freely. And he listed some chemicals and such that in certain supplements that helped A, provide more zinc to the body and B, help the zinc to get through the cell wall. And I looked up those chemicals and they are present in certain foods and like onions, green tea, apples, things like that. And so I decided to look up all of the substances that were necessary for this process to happen and what foods they would be found in. And I made a recipe specifically for that. So I'm gonna show you how to make that recipe today. Um, I will make the webpage for the actual recipe itself soon, hopefully today or tomorrow, and post a link in the description below. But for now, here's the video and I hope you enjoy. Let me know what you think in the comments below and definitely make sure you give me a little thumbs up if you like it. All right, so first we're going to get the pork in the oven uh, about 425. We just wanna get like some nice caramelization on it and then we'll take it back out, throw a lot of the aromatics onto it and then braise it for a long time. But first, let's get the, the oven going at 425. All right, the oven's going. Um, this guy sat in the refrigerator for a little bit. So what I'm gonna do, there's, there's a couple, there's a little bit that's like not smelling very nice. And so what I'm gonna do is just kind of cut some of this off. It was in the refrigerator for about four days and I think that might've been a little too much. If you have just like a small little piece of a big piece of meat that is kind of getting discolored, maybe doesn't smell nice. You can totally cut that off. Usually with meat, that's not the case. Um, if it's a smaller piece of meat, probably not. But with something this large, and I can see very clearly the little spot that's kind of having a little bit of an issue, that that's something I can cut off. It's just this part up here, so I'm just gonna kind of shave it away. It's still a little frozen, so I threw it in the freezer to extend its shelf life a little bit. It's like really close, it's almost bad, but it's it's just, if, it, if you can sit there and smell it, and it doesn't smell amazing, but it doesn't, it's not like you're like totally shocked by the smell, you can typically still use it, especially if it's being, it's a slow cook situation. Like if it was a steak, you were cooking medium rare or something like that, and you had that situation, you would want to use that steak. But since this is gonna be, braised for a long time, you're gonna kill pretty much absolutely anything that could have potentially grown in it. Yeah, it's not it's not horrible. Usually you want like a really fresh piece, but sometimes they do come out like that. All right, for the braising process, we're going to want to first get our pork shoulder into a big pan thing. And just use the disposable pans. They have plenty of these left at the dollar store. And I even went to the, just the normal grocery store here, and these were hardly touched. Honestly, I think a lot of people are just buying food because they think they need it, but a lot of people don't really know how to how to really cook it, especially stuff that, especially like if you have like big cuts like this, I saw a lot of big cuts just left over. People don't really know how to use them or apply them. And so if you're going to the grocery store and you're not seeing a lot of options, I mean, most of the shelves are completely clear. A lot of times you'll see like, Turkeys, frozen turkeys available, big primal, subprimal cuts of beef. And it's because most people don't have the skill to use it. And so we can, I can teach you how to use it so that you can kind of work around the flock a little bit. For this one, we want to get the olive oil going. Extra virgin is probably best, but I do have just regular olive oil. It's really cheap and there's quite a bit of it. Tons of cooking oil and spices still available at the grocery store. And now I keep forgetting to buy salt. That is definitely a problem. I do have my backup salt. Um, my mom got me some really nice Hawaiian salt, uh, Big Island. 
and it's just been my backup salt. I'll definitely keep these little things. I always have backup salt. You, there's almost never a time you're not gonna need salt, especially in times like this, things are running out. Um, have backup salt, so I do. And I'll definitely refill these little containers once, once I'm done, but I'm just using some red salt. Red salt is very mild in flavor. It's not real salty. But actually, it's a little bit more mild than the sea salt. Uh, it's really nice mild salt, and you can use it with just about anything, uh, especially with white meats, uh, like chicken and, and poultry and whatnot. Uh, and pork, pork, although pork is a red meat, it is fairly mild in flavor, so this works really well with that too. Just kind of get the salt all over there. Yeah, and this pork is just right there. I mean, if it if it like smells so bad, you're like, ugh, that's disgusting, then definitely throw it away. But if it's just like, it's got a, it's less than optimal smell, especially in these times where there's not very much available. Um, and it's just kind of like a little bit off, don't worry about it. If you're gonna do long cooking, uh, long term cooking, or this is gonna be like a two, three hour cooking process. Uh, and, and so in those cases, don't really worry about it too much. That'll go away. Uh, tomorrow, this would be unusable. Now we just got our pork shoulder out of the oven. Let's see if I can show you. We got a little bit of color on it, not too much. See, it's a little bit nice and golden brown. Uh, so now what we want to do is we want to add in our vegetables. I just have some, they're just large dice, rough, rough dice. Carrots, I broke my peeler, or I would have peeled them. Peel them. And then we got our sliced onions. I'm actually gonna toss these in olive oil. Toss the carrots in olive oil too, actually. But the sugar's gonna come out of the onions too, and it's gonna get some of the really nice sugar from the oven's onions into the pork. So everything's gonna get nice and brown delicious. This goes back in the oven. I put the pork shoulder in the oven for about 30 minutes at 425 to get the color that I did. Granted, it was a little bit frozen when I started, so if, you are, if you're starting with pork shoulder that is room temperature, you're probably gonna wanna put it in for maybe like 15 minutes at 425, 20 minutes at most, just to get a nice golden brown, you wanna keep an eye on it. Uh, but now we're gonna get some brown on the vegetables, and then after that, we'll add our liquid so that we can start braising. And that also goes in at 425. We're probably gonna do that for about 15 minutes. All right guys, so now I'm gonna make the apple compote. It's basically, I just had some great green tea going on very low heat. And you can see it's nice and brown now. I'll take the tea bags out. And then we have our apples. And these are just like, kind of like a brunoise sort of. It's really small dice. It's not, it's, it's not perfect or exact at all whatsoever, but we just want it to be kind of small so that it kind of creates a nice, thick sauce almost. So what we gotta do now, now that we have our green tea, we'll have to get the string off here, take our bags out. And then get a bigger pot. All right, so first thing we wanna do is we wanna get some color on our apples. And so I have this on high heat. I'm gonna use just a little bit of olive oil. Uh, medium high heat. And let's throw them in, simmering a little bit. We don't want to we don't want to cook them too much, but we do just want a little bit of color on them. I'm a big fan of this spoon. This spoon is dope. Get a spoon like this. And just kind of stir it around. Get some nice color on it. So we've been cooking the apples for a little bit. As they start to lose water, they're gonna be exposed to the oil a lot more. So what we want to do is turn the heat down to about medium, and then just keep stirring and tossing. Trying to get some nice brown over everybody. Just want to make sure we don't burn any of the bits. Because that could happen very easily. These little tiny pieces. And just to encourage everybody to support your local businesses, the liquor stores are empty right now. Even if you don't drink, alcohol is super great for cooking. 
and apples and whiskey go together super well. So I'll just throw a little bit of whiskey in here now. Baker's Mark. Got a shot. Careful if using a gas range because you'll get a flambe and it'll just start, it'll catch on fire. So let's see this, an electric situation, so it won't be a problem. So we got some really nice color on these apples now. Try to get a little bit more. Mm, smells like, that smells really good. And the sugar from the whiskey is going to work really nice with the apples too. That's gonna to really come out in the, the final dish. It's gonna add a little bit of sweetness. All right, so now that we got, we got a really nice golden brown going on here with these apples, you can see. We'll take our green tea. So, um, and I need about, I would say about a quart of green tea. This is really nice in there. And we want to bring this to a, a nice simmer. So what you can do is you can either, you can start on medium high heat and then as it starts to come up and starts to bubble, then you just turn it down to medium and it should be good. So my thing, it says eight, uh, but medium high. And you just want to keep an eye on it make sure it doesn't boil. Just It's just too, you want to treat the ingredients well and apples are very light in texture and in flavor. So you want to not boil the crap out of it. You want to keep some of the actual construction, the cellular construction of the apple. You don't want it to be just goop. And so you want to have it at a simmer so that you still have a little bit of bite from the cell walls remaining intact on the, the apple. But, um, really nice and soft. If you boil it, it'll just turn into goop. So just try and really keep it to a simmer. Ideally, I would like to be able to do everything in the same pan, but since this isn't really doing what I want it to do, it was good to get the apples nice and brown in this pan and do everything else. But in order to have the type of simmer that I want, I'm gonna put everything back into a saucepan. And this is a lot easier because there's less surface area of everything exposed to the air and that reduces the amount of evaporation and so our liquid is going to stay it is just going to stick around in liquid form for longer so that's a really great trick if you're trying to heat up water or anything that contains water quickly and try to evaporate the water out quickly is use a bigger device a bigger uh, a pan or a bigger saucepan or pot or whatnot and the reason that it's going to cook fat, it's going to get hotter faster and evaporate faster is because you have more surface area exposed to the air. Now here, everything is very confined. And so there's very small space for water to escape. But if you have a big roulade, a big old pot, and you want to really get water out of something, then that's, that's going to be the best way because there's just more of the stuff exposed to air. And it's spread thinner too. So it's, it's easier for the heat to heat up all of the product very quickly. It's kind of the difference between a lake and an ocean, right? A lake will heat up much quicker and be a lot more enjoyable to swim in during the springtime or summertime. Whereas the ocean takes a lot longer to heat up because it's a much bigger body of water and less of the actual water is exposed to the heat source. So now on low heat, we're getting a much, much better situation here. It's just barely steaming. I barely have some bubbles coming out of it. The saucepan is definitely a much better option for this. I basically just sweat the onions. They're almost somewhat like translucent. They're not totally crunchy or anything anymore. I can eat it now. So it's kind of like a sweating of the onions just to release some of the aromatic in it. So now that our Onions are sweated and have been sweat. And we have a little bit of cooking going on with the carrots. They have to wait till they were all totally brown. You can if you like, just have low heat in the oven and just get everything really nice and brown. But I'm a little bit of a time crunch. So um, now we put in the water. You can put in stock. Stock is always better. If you can find stock or you already have stock made, uh, it's definitely always going to be better. It's just another opportunity to add flavor to the dish. 
but if you don't, this is actually, um, the carrots and the onions are two components to a regular mirepoix, which is how you would make a stock. And, you know, we have a bone, we have everything in one piece and we have the bone in there. So we're actually kind of making a stock as we're cooking it. If you add stock to it, instead of just water, that's like double stock and that's double flavor. It's like double good, but we can still make things really good. So add some water. We want the water, the liquid to actually come up about two thirds up the way of the piece of meat for braising. We want a little bit of exposure to the air with the meat or it'll just boil in the water and that'll suck out the, uh, the moisture. I didn't buy tin foil. That was smart. Um, so I'm gonna adapt. Tin foil is definitely gonna be the best option here to have a nice airtight seal. But this section might work too. And if this is like the end of civilization as we know it, you know, you know, I just have to make do. No matter what. All right, let's try to get that on there. Now we put this in the oven. We want low heat, so we're gonna do 325 for about two hours. All right, so our pork shoulder is in the oven at 325. We're gonna let that cook for just a couple of hours and see what we got from there. Um, and then we also have our apple green tea compote working. That'll obviously be done pretty quickly. You can do this later on if you want. Sometimes I just like having things ready. When it comes to sauces and soups, anything that is water-based and is it fat-based, like butter sauces and whatnot, usually if you let it sit, if you make it and then let it sit, and even make, let it sit overnight to the next day, after you put in a little bit more salt and or acid, you'll actually, it'll taste better than it did the day before. And that's just because everybody's gotten a really good chance to get to know each other, spent the night together, made sweet, sweet love to each other, and now they're just really connected and, and in sync. And that's why it makes it better. Uh, soups, whenever you make soups, you always want to save some and have it for the next day because it's definitely going to taste better the next day. And water-based sauces, typically in my opinion, will usually taste better the next day. So it's okay that we have this made. We're going to let it simmer for, I'd say 10, 15 minutes. And then after that, I'm just going to let it sit aside, let it cool down. And then we can throw it in the refrigerator. And once the, once the roast, once the shoulder is done, then I will rock it back out, bring it up to heat, and then we'll see how everything pulls together. But it's a really simple dish, and there's only a few steps. The only big thing is just waiting for like three hours. It just takes a few hours to get it done. Pork shoulder is super good for you. A lot of blood in it. It's got heme, a ton of heme iron, so it's, it's just your body just like absorbs all that iron. It just gives you really great uh, immunity. It's great for your immune system and just your body in general for its energy and brain function. So. It is a really fantastic piece of meat and it just, when you cook it for a long time, three, maybe even five hours sometimes, it just is amazing. It just melts, it's so good. So we'll come back with the pork shoulder all cooked and ready, get the sauce up and then we'll be good to go. All right, we got the pork done. Um, I put it in the refrigerator last night after I've been cooking, but I just threw it back in the oven so that I could heat up again and I can show you the end products. So the pork turned out really nice. It pulls apart nicely. It's still a little cool because I didn't heat it up all the way in the oven. It just kind of melted the fat, but we have just this really great broth going on, especially since the bone was in there. The meat comes off the bone really quite easily. Yeah, very easily. You know you, you, know you did the right 
did everything right if the meat comes off the bone very easily. And the only reason I'm, the only reason it's taking, I can't just pull the bone out right now is because I didn't heat it back up all the way. I didn't really want to cook it too much more. But yeah, here's our bone. Boom. So this is really nice. What we're gonna do, let's taste the, the vegetables taste great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all the pork out and set it aside for later. Try to get some of the, uh, try to get all the solids out first and then I can just pour the liquid into it. I will get this guy on the stove top and try to simmer it a little bit to get some of the liquid out and concentrate a lot of the flavors that we have in this nice broth. Now what I'm gonna do actually is pull some of the liquid out of this pan here, throw it back on the pork, try not to get too much of the solids in, and I'm gonna throw it back in the oven just to bring it back up to temperature. Just put a little bit of liquid in here so we don't lose um, lose the moisture from the meat too much. And then I'll definitely keep the bone in there. Cover it. Turn the, I think 395 is good. While our vegetable solids are warming up and reducing, and our pork is also heating up, this is when we'll want to start cooking off the beans. You can cook beans right from dry, but the thing is, is that they do take a lot longer and they might cook a little less evenly, so I really like to rehydrate my beans. And I just cover them with water and the beans really just suck up all the water. And now it's like, I can even like maybe pull them apart, I'm not sure, but they're much bigger and fuller and they'll just cook a lot more evenly and nicely. Beans in the saucepan. I got some black beans here, they're very easy to find, especially right now. I'm gonna fill up the beans with water. Cover. Now I'm gonna heat back up the apple compote. We have our apple compote sauce. It's almost like applesauce, it's just a little bit chunkier. That'll go really nicely on top. Just get that in the saucepan. Get that on low heat, just to bring it back up. Now that we have our pork is just about heat up, totally heat up. We have our nice little stock here going. We got the beans coming up, looking pretty good. We got our compote coming up. One of the things I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna take some of this stock out of here. I'm gonna throw it into the compote, just to add a little bit more pork flavor to the apple. That's pretty good stuff. This is just a very simple dish. I mean, it's, it's not very complicated. There's, see, there's four components to it. You just have the veggies that you cooked with the pork. You got the black beans. You have your apple compote, and it's just, the beans will go first, then we'll put the vegetables on. We'll put the pork on top of that, and then the nice little apple sauce that we have here. Make sure you store the pork with the stock because there's a lot of good fat and so in the refrigerator the fat will solidify over everything else and that'll keep oxygen from getting into the meat. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make it last longer. That's why they do the uh, 
the French technique is confit. And it's basically you cook duck, like duck confit is you cook duck in its own fat. And you store it in the fat and that keeps oxygen from getting into it. And that's, it was actually an old preservation method before refrigeration. And so storing the pork at least in that stock creates that layer of fat and that will help improve shelf life. It looks like everything is ready to put together now. So what we wanna do is we're gonna start with some of the beans. Use a slotted spoon for this so you don't get a lot of the bean stuff all over it, all over the plate, the bean water. Start with some beans. And then we'll add our vegetables on top. Next we'll have our pork. Situation. I'm such a mess. This has happened, but we just clean up as we go. Put that right on top, very nice. And then we have some fresh, thinly sliced apples for a little garnish. There you have it. It's our Corona Fighter dish. So we have our black beans, which are really good source of zinc. We have our onions and carrots, onions being very good um, for the zinc problem. And then carrots are just, I, they have a lot of really, I forget what all the benefits are, but they, are, they do have some serious benefits. We got the pork, uh, really good source of protein and good fats and then heme iron, which your body will absorb for a really good brain function and immunity. And then we have our apples with our green tea, which also helps the zinc problem. So this, this is a whole plate of Corona fighting ingredients. So hopefully you like that. I'll post the recipe here pretty soon in the description below. And uh, enjoy. Damn, that apple like, really does it. The green tea apple combo. The beans are like, they got some bite to them still. Probably cook the beans a little longer. I'd say we cook the beans maybe 20 minutes. Black beans take a little longer, I think. One thing that would really like spice this dish up is if you had some like red onions and then you pickled them with some vinegar and salt and you threw some red onions on top, pickled red onions, that would be tits.